Hey friends and welcome back to Sewing From Scratch. I am Kate and this is where I teach you everything I know about sewing and we learn more together along the way. Today I'm kind of, I don't know, debunking myself or like busting some, some misconceptions that I may have caused through a previous video. So a while back after I first set up my projector I did a video on why it's no good or why you know it might not be good for everyone and I still stand by that I stand by that it's not you know not every single person can can use it can make it work uh, but I do now think that it's great for most people most situations there is some sort of solution we can we can find that you know allows us to to work for that situation but there were things I said in that video that I now want to readdress now that I've used my projector a lot more and I know a little bit of the workarounds of it and just things that just like weren't true to begin with based on that video. So if you haven't seen that video, of course it will be linked below. You can go check it out to know kind of, you know, that, that background first and then watch this video. But just a little recap, I do have the Ape, Ape Man LC350 projector. So basically I'm just going to go through and talk about the points that I talked about in that video but telling you why I still think they hold true or you know a little bit more information now that I've used my projector so much. So two things that I said that were wrong in that video, one thing was the, the capabilities or the, uh, not the capabilities but the, I don't know, like the output. I'm not techie, so I really don't know the right words. But. Okay, so what I said in the first video is that this is a 1080p resolution projector. It is not. That is not the native resolution. That is the supported resolution, which apparently means nothing to us as sewists. Again, I know nothing about this. The native resolution of this projector is actually 480p, which is 800 by 480, which again, I know nothing about other than I'm assuming that's pixels. If you are wanting to purchase this projector for sewing though, it is fine. I do like it. They say this is one of the only 480p projectors that does work for us. However, if you are looking at a different style or something that you maybe want to be a little bit clearer, this you'll be looking for something with 720p native resolution. Another thing I mentioned was that my projector is one of the brighter ones because I was kind of complaining about how dim it is. It is not one of the brighter ones in actual fact. I think it is actually on the opposite end of the scale. So to kind of um, counteract that, somebody mentioned making the file project in a different color. I have not figured out how to do this on Adobe. I've tried, I can't find it. If you know, leave me a comment, please. But I, so if I know that I'm going to be projecting onto a, like a, a darker color or a color that the regular black lines would have a hard time showing up on, then when I'm altering it in Inkscape, then I change the color of the lines to like a green or a, even a yellow, something that'll show up better on dark colors. I also, on almost every file, change the weight of the lines to be like four point or something instead of whatever they're set to. I find this easier to see and it doesn't really affect the, the size and shape of the garment pieces at all. So one thing I wasn't sure about was it being quicker than, you know, printing out, taping, and then using the pattern. So this I still, I still am conflicted on. I do prefer the projector, the digital version that I do. But essentially like printing out your pattern and then cutting it out does take time, especially if it's like, you know, 40, 60 page pattern. If you are using a file that, whether it's a projector file or not, actually, you, you might still be doing some manipulating to that file. I pretty much do for every pattern that I use now, unless it's like a kid's pattern that has layers already. But for anything for myself or my husband, I always, almost always, I now put it into Inkscape and then I can isolate our size. And if there's any pieces that I don't need, I get rid of those. If there's anything I need to lengthen or shorten, which there usually is, I do that. If there's any grading that needs to happen, I do that. If I want to make sure it's gonna fit on a certain size of fabric, I do that. So I do use Inkscape now. Sometimes those changes can take as little as five, 10 minutes, which obviously is faster than putting a piece of, like a paper pattern together and cutting it out. 
Other times it can take longer if I'm doing significant hacks or adjustments or if I'm really tight on fabric and I really need to, you know, measure, maybe there's a flaw in the fabric and I need to get it exactly so or if I'm, you know, color blocking and I need to make sure the pieces are all for one color over here and then the other color over here. So there's there's things that can make it take longer. However, in my opinion, I still like it better than using paper. I just like that there is no clutter. It just seems like it goes quicker. It's, it's maybe more satisfying doing it on the computer and then I have that file forever and I can make as many files from the same pattern as I need to so I can you know make one for my size I can make one for my mom my friend all these things and different adjustments can be saved as one file it's easy to click there and find it organize it nicely on my computer rather than having a big giant drawer full of patterns that I have to rifle through every time I'm looking for something so is it quicker again I'm still just not a hundred percent sure I think on average in the long run it is quicker and it for me even that time that I need to take to do those adjustments is worth it because also with paper I was also doing adjustments anyway and those seem to take longer on paper for most things also. If your pattern only comes with like principal like letter size file there is a program that you can use to combine that all into like an AO size sheet or a projector file and that's called PDF Stitcher. I haven't used that too much. Uh, when I have used it, I mean, I get it to work. It just takes a little bit of figuring, but it does work and it's, it's fabulous, but that's just another step. So then obviously that takes longer as well. And then I would then put it into Inkscape and get rid of everything I don't need on there. Also, so the way that I use my projector is I project it onto the fabric and then cut the fabric. I don't want paper at all. Some people do project onto paper and then trace it, which quite honestly, I don't know why they're doing that. I guess it's easier than putting like printed pieces together, but personally I would just get from an AO shop then. I don't know. I, um, I still have yet to see the value in that, but... I guess if you're doing like a lot of pattern hacking that can be useful if you're if it's not something you're comfortable with digitally in that case like I don't know that it would be quicker so I don't know if you do that if you project onto paper and trace it and then cut it out let me know why you do that instead of just projecting onto fabric because maybe there's something I'm missing here all right another point I talked about was that it's not easy to take the projector with you obviously I have a ceiling mounted projector I to take that camping like that's just not not a thing however before I had a projector I never took my pattern pieces and cutting mat and all that with me anyway I would always just prep everything at home and then take it along and just take my machines and whatever else I needed I wouldn't really take the patterns themselves so as far as that goes like I don't really think it's a worthy point of like not getting a projector also I if you have like the the ones that sit on your desk ultra short throw I guess they're called and then they project onto your surface those would be fairly easy to take as long as you had the space to set up and stuff I mean you can do it on the floor even but that would be a little bit more feasible for you to take along if you travel and sew a lot now I think I also mentioned something about having a dedicated space or needing a dedicated space uh, this kind of goes along with like taking the projector with you. Mine is ceiling mounted. I'm fortunate that I have a space that I is set up for me all the time. If you don't, I mean, you can set it up in your dining room and just have it project onto your table. People come over and be like, what's that? I guess you, it's a conversation piece. Not a big deal. For me, it would be like I wouldn't like that. But depending on the type of person you are, you might not might not bother you. It might be more worth it to have it like that than not. The like the cords and stuff. So my husband routed ours through the attic and then down to my computer. So I don't like it just has a little bit of cord mess right where it is, but then the rest is hidden. I know some people again aren't as fortunate to have that option. So there's like go along the ceiling and the wall and stuff. So if you were putting it in a common area, that might be a little bit like you might not want to do that. And there's also options to like not have that ceiling mount or wall mount you can go with an ultra short throw which just sits on your desk it's easy to calibrate you can set it up every single time and then I mean it's pretty simple but like there are options and I just I don't want it to be an excuse right you know what I mean like 
people make excuses for all kinds of things and quite frankly I don't have time for that so you either want it or you don't and you make it happen if you want it so I'll just leave it at that as far as the learning curve I the learning curve for the projector itself was not bad for me I quite enjoyed you know figuring it out it didn't really take long as soon as I got it calibrated it was good to go basically the learning curve with Inkscape is a little bit different and I am still definitely still learning it I'm not an expert by any means I am not a tech savvy person as I think I mentioned already so anything to do with like computer programming I am like I kind of just fumble around until I figure out what works for me whether that's the right way or not I think I have one Inkscape video and I have plans to do more so if there's something you really want to see regarding projector manipulation let me know down in the comments and I will see what I can do to get that up for you so yeah so the learning curve for Inkscape was uh, you know it's it's <sighs> I'm hesitant to say steep, but it is significant. PDF Stitcher, again, I could do a video on that. I think there, I think there's some on YouTube already, but those, that one is um, also like you kind of gotta just like take your time and do it. It's not something you want to do if you're in a rush, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, once you get comfortable with those programs, you'll find yourself like going to them all the time because if you don't then it's just not as good so I would say if you are a projector user Inkscape is they go hand in hand and you can't really use a projector without Inkscape in my opinion now that I have used it so much all right limiting the device use so I had said that when I'm projecting that I can't um like somebody else can't be using the computer and this still holds true I know I mentioned like getting a second monitor and all these things I don't know that there's a way to like split it to have it so that the projector is projecting my image and then the monitor is just working from the computer I don't I don't think there is again not tech savvy so if there is leave me a comment down below it doesn't happen too frequently but the odd time it's like I just have to wait till my husband's done his work or vice versa so again we have like other computers that can be used but this is our main one next up limited projector files so not every company offers projector files and this kind of again goes back to Inkscape I think at the time I didn't know about Inkscape basically now if you I've already mentioned if you have something that's just letter file you can put it in PDF stitcher and then upload it to Inkscape do all your adjustments and then project it even companies that are offering projector files I still most of the time tweak the file to my liking so that'll be you know the line density moving the the pieces around to fit my needs how I like to project them getting getting rid of pieces that I'm not going to be using isolating the sizes which obviously you can do just in the projector file there's just a lot of things that I prefer I also prefer a certain size border around that suits my projector so that I don't have pieces cut off on you know the ends or sides of the um, of the file when I'm projecting so there are more and more companies using projector files making projector files but I wouldn't like I don't want that to be a hindrance to you if you think oh I can only use projector files no no no, no. you can use any type of file and you, you just might have to do some formatting to get it to be able to project all right, not as clear as paper. I still stand by this. It is still, and like I've tried to like figure out adjusting the, the focus and stuff like that. And it's just not, I just can't get it to focus. Um, the lines are fine. Like I can, I can see the lines just fine and I am able to cut out just fine and all that. But as far as like reading the teeny tiny print, it doesn't happen so when I'm using Inkscape I can if I need to know the the label on it I can make, put in a text box there saying what it is or some of the projector files are getting better at the text making it bigger so that you can read it but essentially it's meant to be seen on a computer screen so it, or printed out so it's like a small text box and on a computer it's fine but when you blow it up to actual size 100% size then it's I mean it's not so that's just something I guess you have to deal with and quite honestly how often do I read the pattern pieces anyway not super often lots of back and forth with the computer 
I have learned through Inkscape that I can now like put my pieces closer together so that it's less back and forth, but it is still quite a bit. However, it is still better than fumbling with paper pattern pieces. So uh, moot point, I don't know. It's something to consider, I guess, if your computer is not in the same room as your projector. All right, and then you can't lay out all the pattern pieces. So this is still something that I kind of miss, I guess, uh, being able to like have the physical piece of fabric and the physical pattern pieces and lay them out and figure out how I want to manipulate each one so that I can get the most out of my fabric. However, since learning Inkscape, there is a very simple way to do this. On Inkscape, you just make a, a, like a shape, I guess, a rectangle or whatever shape your fabric is, the, side, the dimensions of your fabric, and then you can put your pattern pieces in there. I do plan on doing a video for this, um, like pattern Tetris on Inkscape. So give this video a thumbs up if you wanna see that. But it's, it's quite simple and it's actually quite fun. The only thing is like you have to measure your fabric pieces and then there is opportunity for obviously for error. And the nice thing about doing it on the computer is then you can see it right there. Like you can go back to that and see how you have everything laid out and then you can lay it out exactly the way you have it. Also, the nice thing with Inkscape is that for anything that's cut on the fold, you can then unfold it or like you would duplicate it and mirror it and then you have one pattern piece if you like to cut just like on the flat not folded fabric i still like to cut on the fold a lot of times but i will do this especially if i'm playing powdered tetris or something like that okay and finally the last thing i have to talk about is the adjustments and i've kind of touched on this already but i know that it was something that i had mentioned in the last video is that you can't make adjustments like for you know full bust adjustment or length or anything like that, you can, if you've already figured it out, Inkscape, you can do these things on. There are some videos already on YouTube. I personally don't find them all that useful because they don't use actual pattern pieces that come from a file. The, the ones that I'm thinking of are drawn in, like they're, they're kind of like icons or clip art if you will whatever you can imagine that and then so that seems to be something that's made in Inkscape and then all these manipulations are happening on something that's already um, created in the proper format when I try this when I import like a file and try this it doesn't work all the time so any of like the slice or the separate or any of those things doesn't want to work on the pattern pieces that I'm bringing in most of the time. The odd time it'll work, but most of the time it doesn't. So oftentimes I just end up tracing what I've done and or the pattern piece and then kind of manipulating it that way. So there are ways to do it. There are adjustments that are easier to make than others. If you are interested in any of these adjustments, I would love to hear that down below. So like I've never done an FBA on the computer, but I can't see it being that tricky. So there'd be like FBA or there'd be length adjustments or sway back adjustments or any of these things that uh, are fit adjustments. I have altered the, the curve of a pair of pants, like the uh, back curve, crotch curve, I guess. I've done that and the way that I do it is quite crude. I would think that it's not the right way to do it, but again, I have tried to find the right way and it, I just can't figure it out. So if you know some good videos that I'm missing out on for Inkscape pattern adjustments, let me know that down in the comments as well. Anyway, that's kind of the last thing I wanted to talk about is that it pretty much anything is possible if you have enough time and, and patience to dedicate to it. I actually kind of like like prepping patterns now um it's still in the end far and above way 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 better than having a drawer full of paper patterns or having to print tape together and uh or glue together and cut out or trace and cut or getting paying five dollars a page for an ao shop that kind of thing so i still am like eternally grateful for my projector for a hundred dollars. I don't know why I put it off so long, but I did. So here we are, can't look back, only forward with my projector. 
I do have a projector playlist with a couple other videos. I will link that down in the description box as well. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Let me know down below what kind of projector you have and how you're liking it. If you, if I miss something that you're really looking to learn, please leave that down below and I will address it for you. So. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can catch my next video and I will see you there. Bye.